Okay, so just to finish up what we were doing at the end of that video. So once we found the legs of um, this vector that was in here, it's like that vector that was in there disappears and now we have a right angle triangle whose one leg is 65.98, adding the 40 and the 25.98 because they're going in the same direction in their head to tail. And the other one's at right angles to it, going 15 degrees, 15 newtons um, going north. So now we can square them, add them together, and find the square root, right? So it'll just be this 65.98 newtons squared plus the 15 newtons squared and take the square root. And when you do that, you get a resultant of 67.66 newtons. But of course, we still have to find the angle. So then you could do tan theta is equal to 15 newtons over the 65.98 newtons inverse tan. And you will get an angle of 12.81 degrees. Which way are we measuring off of? We're first going east and then we turned and went north. So the final answer here is this the vector's length and its direction. So case four really is about break down the vectors going at angles into their components or into their legs, and then you can do B, then you have case three. Okay, so those are the Four possible ways to add vectors, you got to take in all really what they're saying is you have to take into account the direction. You just can't add their sizes. Why is that important? Because there are so many quantities in physics that are vectors. And we are finally ready to start Unit 1. And Unit 1 is called Mechanics. All good physics courses start with mechanics. Mechanics is the branch of physics that deals with motion and forces. And we break it into three parts. Part one is kinematics, which is what we are starting in one minute. Kinematics is the study of motion. We look at cars going 25 meters study of motion. I can't talk and write something different at the same time. 25 meters per second, we look at them stopping in three seconds, etc. It's a study of motion, but we do not look at the forces that would be needed to make the objects move like that. So it's a study of motion only. The second part, which we'll do when we finish kinematics, is called statics. Static. It comes from the same root of the same word as stationary. This is the study of forces on objects at rest. Study of forces on objects at rest. So the top one is looking at movement, no forces. The second one is looking at forces, no movement. The third one puts them together. It's called dynamics. And in dynamics, it's the study of the relationship between forces and motion. In other words, how much force do you need to put on an object to get it to stop? Between, that's the symbol for between forces and motion. What happens if you put this big of a force on the object? What happens to the motion? Okay? So that's where we're going. And so today, kinematics. Now, before we can get too far, we need to define some words that I think you've seen before. The first pair is distance and displacement. If we were in class, I, you would all tell me that you'd heard of distance before, and then I would say, so what is it? and then you would all struggle to put it into words. Distance is simply the total length of the path that an object has traveled. Total length of path an object has traveled. It is a scalar. Okay, 
There's a scalar. So if this is my room, and I might walk this way, and then this way, and then this way, the distance I have traveled is this length, plus this length, plus this length. That got me to that point. Okay, the symbol for distance, usually we write it as a delta. Delta is a Greek letter, third Greek letter. We now have theta, mu, and delta. And the delta, the delta that used here in most of uh, math and science, it means change in. So the change in position, delta D, okay, is the distance. It's a scalar. Its counterpart in the vector world is called displacement. And displacement is the straight line length and direction. The straight line length and direction from where an object started to where it ended up. From where an object started to where it ends. It is a vector. The hint for that being the word direction. So if we look at this picture where the red line is the dis distance, the displacement is from where you start it to where you end it. And always remember the arrowhead goes from uh, to where you end it. Okay? So sometimes distance and displacement are the same thing. Right? Like sometimes I start here and I walk across the room. And maybe I walk to this point and maybe that's six meters east. So what's my distance? Six meters. What's my displacement? Six meters east. But now maybe I walk back. And if I walk back, what's my distance now? My distance would be 12 meters, right? Because I walked over and back. So this would be my delta D, my distance. But what's my displacement going to be? How far am I from where I started? I'm back where I started. My displacement is going to be zero. I forgot to tell you, the symbol for displacement is also a delta D, but it has an arrow over the top to indicate it's a vector. So then my displacement is zero, but my distance is 12. So as long as the object doesn't change direction, the distance and the displacement will be the same. But as soon as the object changes direction, the distance and displacement are no longer the same. Okay, so up here, the distance would be, I don't know, if that's four meters, three, two meters, and three meters, the distance might be four, three, nine meters, but the displacement is definitely tinier and that's because the object changed direction. Okay? The next two that we need to look at, so that's distance and displacement, one pair. The second pair, and we're going to run out of time here, so we'll finish it next day in class. The second pair are speed and velocity. And lots of people, the unphysicist in the world, you interchange these two, but they're not really interchangeable. Speed is the distance an object traveled over time. Distance an object travels in a period of time. I'm going to run out of time. So it's equation, and we usually call that the average speed, so V with an average, is equal to delta D for distance over time. How far did it travel in a certain period of time? Its units are usually meters per second. Okay, we'll come back to velocity in class. Your homework for tonight is on this sheet that I didn't give all of you. I will post it in uh, both in this file and in um, handouts. I just want you to do the first four. I have it copied, so I'll give you the rest, and we'll get to the rest after we go over the other questions.